welcome to the link this week. I uh, thank you for always joining us. And if you miss any of our, uh, of our discussions, you can catch them on uh, our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash NTV Uganda, and search for the link, NTV the link. Tonight we are speaking about agent banking. It has been around about two years. But we're speaking mainly from the point of first, uh, whether it's an opportunity for business for you. And tonight in the studio uh, is uh, Mr. Richard Diego, who is the CEO of Agent Banking Company. Richard, welcome. Thank you very much, Samuel. When Glad I saw, to be here. Thank you. When I had Agent Banking, I thought it was banks. Now I hear there's an Agent Banking Company. company right. Give us a brief overview of how Agent Banking as a system works. Yeah, so I will just quickly tell you about Agent Banking Company. Yeah. This is a subsidiary of Uganda Bankers Association mm -hmm. and Eclectics International, okay. who is uh, our technology partner. Okay. So we did launch Agent Banking, like you mentioned, uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I will briefly explain what Agent Banking is. Yes, okay. So Agent Banking is an, is an initiative uh, mm -hmm. through which uh, a commercial bank appoints a third party entity mm -hmm. to be able to provide selected or permitted banking services uh, to the uh, population. Okay. to the consumers okay. yeah I, I say permitted because there are certain services that you may not access uh, through an agent back. yes correct mm. okay very so good. yeah so the guy i see there in the hardware shop in the sometimes even the mobile money shop but there's an agent there yes those are the guys you talk about yes okay. those are agents okay um it's an opportunity for people to invest how does one become a banking agent what do you require for me to join the banking agency business okay so as uh, an existing uh, business person uh, first of all the requirements uh, are basic you know you need to have a registered business okay. uh, as a sole proprietor you could be a partnership mm -hmm. you could be a company mm -hmm. uh, you could be a microfinance institution a circle you know all these uh, are business entities mm -hmm. uh, so long as they have the documentation okay. uh, are authorized to become agents mm -hmm. so uh, of course the capital you have to have that capital mm -hmm. Uh, the regulation also requires that you have a bank account okay. that should have been existent for six months. Okay. So it will require a bank statement mm -hmm. uh, for that business uh, that has been operational for six months. Yeah. The business should have also been around for 12, 24 months. Mm -hmm. I mean, sorry, 12 months, sorry. A year. Yeah, a year. Mm -hmm. So that means, you know, it has to be a formal business. Yeah, f uh, formally registered. Mm. Uh, of course, the expectation is that if you're formally registered, you're paying your taxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> taxes, so, taxes yeah. Also. No, I mean, uh, it should yeah, be yeah, a formally yeah. registered business um, yeah. uh, because we need to comply uh, with the tax uh, authorities. Yeah. We usually charge agents uh, 6% of the commission they earn. Okay. So, again, mm. you can see the validity of mm. uh, the, the formal business uh, setup uh, that mm. should be in place. Okay. So, yes, uh, capital, you know, the documentation that is the customer due diligence that we do mm. and uh, pretty much it uh, should be good to go so the business should have been around for 12 months that's one uh, because so you cannot go and set up a business and start away mm. doing agent banking mm. so i think that is very important and most of the business entities tend to wonder how come i'm not eligible yes. so yes you should have had that business running for 12 months and then there should be a bank statement of course we have to do due diligence on the uh, entity that we are bringing, you have to be fit, yes. you know, to be able to provide. Because remember, we are building trust. Mm. Uh, therefore, we need to give the customer that level of trust that yes, this agent can actually carry out. Uh, I can carry out my banking services yeah. through the agent. So uh, it's uh, critical uh, there. Richard, yes. capital. Uh, uh, how much capital? What does it depend on? How much I put in terms of capital? Give, give us a initial overview on the capital issue. Okay, so capital really would re depend on. The location. Mm. There are locations, I mean, that are really, really, that have high, you know, uh, uh, traffic. Traffic. You know, mm. there's a lot of traffic. Mm. The, uh, the economic activity, you know, it also plays a big role. Uh, mm. there, there could be a place where I require a capital of 2 million. Yeah. Another person might require a capital of 10 million, depending on mm. what kind of activity is happening around there. Okay. So, but the minimum usually we go for is 2 million. Okay. Uh, and the maximum, I mean, it's open. The mm. agent can invest as much as possible. Okay. But, um, once, because this is, this is uh, a business of turning over mm. money. Mm. The money has to turn over several times. Mm. So if I had two million, and then I, in the beginning of the day, in the morning, definitely two million could be done by lunchtime. Absolutely. And therefore I have to go back to the yeah. bank and replenish. Yes. So that replenishment, the more time you replenish mm. due to the demand, 
then the more you're actually going to make in terms of commission. Okay. So two million, I would say, could be the bare minimum uh, because we see customers transacting higher values through the bank agents. I see some agents who have uh, several, the agents of several banks. Yes. Two million, is it enough now to do five banks, for instance, or mm. that changes? Well, that changes, like I said, that's the bare minimum. Yes. Now, depending on the demand, really, mm. in that area. Mm. What, because the customers will actually come and demand for the service. Yeah. So, in most cases, you could start with two million, mm. but because the demand grows every day, mm. we are doing a lot of awareness, mm. then the customer, the traffic is going to flow, yeah. and the, this agent will get overwhelmed, mm. and therefore they could think of, you know, maybe a credit facility okay. from their financial institution, mm or be able to get capital, so mm. for more capital also to right. add into the business. So okay. it's really demand driven, uh, much as we, we said the, uh, the, the minimum is two million. Okay. So two million is not casting stone. Okay. Yes. How does an agent make money? Now I'm, I become an agent, maybe I have five million. Yeah. I've got the license. How do I make money? I want to understand. Yeah, so I'll make it, I'll break it down. Uh, I might want to make it as easy as possible mm. for the agents, those potential agents out yeah, there. Yeah. So if an agent started with two million okay. and they turned around the two million in one day, five times, mm. because I mean, you have to keep going to get float. Oh, but I'll start, to, I'll just do the two million. Mm. Should you turn around two million five times in a day? That is that's 10 million, million yeah, right? 10 million. So in other words, you've transacted 10 million, much as your capital is two. Two, yes. Now, what that means is, what I need to uh, explain is that 0.5% mm. of the amount of money that you have transacted mm. is, what, is the, what the commission is. As simple so as that. 0.5% of 10 million. 10 million. Uh, so if you have turned 10 million in a day, 0.5% mm -hmm. of 10 million is 50,000. Okay. What that means, in, in a month, how much do you have? 1.5. Yeah, that's my so money. That's your money, mm. commission. Mm. Of course, we'll take off 0.6%. I mean, sorry, 6% to, uh, to URA. It's called withholding, withholding tax. tax. Yeah, and then the balance is for the age. Of course, so 94%. If I, 50, if I make 50 a day, yes. withholding tax for argument's sake is 6% of, of 50,000. 50, yes, which is about mm. 300 shillings. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, 3,000 shillings. Yeah. So 3,000 shillings multiplied by 30 days, that's about uh, 150,000. Okay. So 1 million 350 is yours. Ah. As simple as that. Okay. As long it's a it's it's a game of numbers. Mm. How often do you you could have the two million and the whole day you're not serving the you're customer? Not doing yes. Mm. So and that is why we have to do a lot of awareness. Okay. Push the traffic to the agent premises. to make it uh, Richard, premises before yes. we run out of premises. Uh, uh, what do you require? Do I just set up shop and start? What do you require in terms of premises? Because that's now my the capital end of my investment into the premises. What do you require in terms of premises? I think uh, what is very important is security. Yes. Uh, in terms of the premises, mm. so, and when you read the regulation, uh, you'll find that security is very important uh, for the I agent. In terms of the the setup, it has to be brick and mortar. Mm. Uh, it has to be a permanent structure. Okay. Uh, so the retail shops, most of the retail shops um, actually pass that uh, requirement. Mm. Uh, you know, set up your shop. You could have some burglars. You know, you could have, you know, a bit of some counters, yes. some glass set up, you know, plywood and all mm -hmm. that. But it has to be a properly secure uh, environment. Okay. That also psychologically gives com confidence to the customer, the customer who is coming to transact. Mm. No customer is going to walk under an umbrella <laughs> and transact a million shillings when <laughs> yeah. other people are looking I at that. I see what you mean. Yeah. Mm. So security is very important, even for the business uh, owner, mm. the agent themselves. Uh, definitely, we also advise that if they can afford have a safe, a box, mm -hmm. you know, a heavy safe mm. for keeping the money. Some of them, those who could afford also could have a chub, yeah. you know, for locking, yes. you know. Se that's all security again. Okay. You need secure, depending on how much you've invested. Okay. Someone has invested 50 million, I can tell you, will invest in a chub. Yes. Will invest in CCTV mm. within the shop. Mm. Will invest in maybe a security guard. Mm. So, but for the bare minimum, we expect a proper uh, shop set up, a retail shop. Yeah. Uh, for and, and that has to be permanent. Okay. We don't expect the agent to shift to another location. <laughs> you need to find Yeah, him. they are supposed to operate from where they started. Okay. If they are to shift, then that has to be uh, approved again. Before yeah. we leave, uh, Richard, let's turn to the consumer. Why should I go to an agent and not to my bank? Mm. Really? Um, let me see it. Yes, it's near me, but it's not enough. I'm not going there. Why should I go? Well, uh, I think convenience is the name of the game here, okay. is, of, of, you know, is, is, the, is the magic uh, 
you know, it's, it's the magical, you know, value proposition for the agent, mm. for the customer. Mm. I mean, in the past, a customer had to move 50 kilometers. That was, that, that was the average distance mm. between a bank branch and the customer. Yeah. Uh, but we're saying the customer should move 500 meters, mm. not 50 kilometers. Okay. So if you can move 500 meters, that is half a kilometer, half a kilometer mm. you know, in your neighborhood, I think you're saving on transport. Definitely. The average amount of money you'd spend on transport mm. probably could be 5,000 mm. to and fro to go to your bank branch mm. and get that service. Okay. But we are saying across the 12,000 agents countrywide, you, could, you should be able to walk to any of the agents and get a service as close as uh, they are and to the your And the consumer will home. be comparing issues of charges. Is, of course. Is, is, is that an issue? The charges are quite, quite affordable, mm. uh, especially to, uh, compared to other uh, services that are, are, are available in the market. Mm. Now, to access uh, banking services again, you remember I talked about 0.5%? Mm. To the customer, it's 1%. Okay. On average, I'm looking at across uh, the transaction values. That's the charge. That's the charge. Mm. But by and large, it is when you compare the charge to the transport cost, mm. uh, it is definitely up to five times cheaper for the customer. Okay. Because if you're spending 5,000 to the banking hall and you're spending 1,000 to transact, you'd rather save the 4,000, right? I, so, I so it's the convenience that we are really giving the customer. Yeah. Uh, but also, mm. those who are not banked, we're saying there's an opportunity to go to the agent yeah. and get the account opened through yeah, the agent. Yeah, yeah. The agent would facilitate it. Okay. Yeah. So we are saying the customers out there because we need more and more people into the banking okay. industry. Uh, and that is why agent banking, most importantly, brings uh, uh, to the economy, okay. getting more people banked. Richard, I've been told my time has run, run out. Um, that was uh, Richard Diego, CEO, agent banking company. Um, you've heard from the man. If you want to take part in that business of agents, uh, bank, agent banking, yes. uh, you had what you need to do. If you missed this program or you want to listen to it again, again, go to our YouTube channels. That was the link tonight.